Across the world, tens of millions of children are missing out on an education, but there is hope. Enrollment worldwide is increasing, and now there's a new tool that's bringing education straight into the hands of children. Our cameras take you to Ghana, where we explore how a simple technology is poised to revolutionize education. It's market day in this small Ghanaian village. It's also a school day. Living here is 14-year-old Gideon, a boy determined to do something exceptional with his life. And he believes education is the key to getting him there. But for him and so many others in Ghana, school is often a distant dream. Gideon begins his day caring for his seven brothers and sisters. And then it's off to work at the market, helping his parents who themselves have five jobs just to get by. At 14, Gideon has already worked more than half his life. I was six years old and I started working with my parents. Gideon rises three hours before the sun, cooking kenke, a dish made from corn his family grows. It's both their daily meal and livelihood, selling it at a local market. I work seven hours in a day. Gideon spends much of his day at the family stand, often alone. He's just one of some 30 million children in sub-Saharan Africa who miss all or some school, according to United Nations estimates. This despite the fact that school enrollment rates have increased nearly 20% in the region in the past decade. As soon as Gideon finishes at the stand, he races to school hoping to catch whatever classes remain. But for him and many others, it's not just about having time to attend school, it's about having the resources. Education here often comes at a cost. Although the government funds most public schools and tries to provide enough supplies, many students must pay for their lunches, their uniforms, even their books. Provisions in the classroom are often scarce. If you don't have the book, join your friend who has one. Is that right? Yes, sir. Printing options are limited in the country. Shipping costs are extremely expensive. And many of Ghana's roads are so bad that trucks carrying the books frequently break down. Two or three students often have to share one book. Most classrooms have only half the texts they need. There is a town library, but most days it's locked. The shelves are almost entirely bare, except for the occasional donated book, many of which are more than half a century old and often cover subjects irrelevant here, like the history of the United States written in Spanish. Despite all of this, Gideon says he won't stop dreaming of his future. Then I would like to be a teacher because it's someone who has helped me. If I stop schooling, I don't know what to happen to my life. But the answer may have come in the most unlikely form. In 2010, something radical happened that may just change everything here. How many books do you hold in your hand? Six. Can you hold? Now you can. I have 
malaria. This is called an E, or electronic reader, and many believe this modern technology has the potential to revolutionize education, not just here, but in other remote areas across the globe. There's a billion children in the world currently, in the developing world, that don't have an effective education system. Colin McKelvey is co-founder of World Reader, a non-profit that hopes to transform education with e-readers and e-books. There is an enormous amount at stake here. The e-reader, and more importantly, the communications with the e-reader using the telecommunication technology, is just such a potent uh, solution for this challenge. Students now have the ability to hold the power of education in the palm of their hands. Utilizing Africa's rapidly growing communication technology, Africa is the second largest mobile market in the world. E-books can now be downloaded in just 60 seconds through extensive existing cell phone networks, eliminating the need for Wi-Fi or internet access. Needing little electricity, the e-readers are charged at school, each charge lasting some 10 days. Many book publishers are asked permission to distribute their e-books to students free of charge. While students devour the content in school and at home, some gain more than just an education. Many, like high school senior Rita, find inspiration. I would like to be a leader one day, and I'm going to help my people. I would like to be a barrister. I think I have to read a lot to know about things and people, so that in future I will be able to judge people's cases in a good way, so that people won't suffer. Costing some 80 US dollars, the e-reader comes with access to tens of thousands of digital books. Purchased with private donations and government grants, this technology is already in five countries in sub-Saharan Africa. And World Reader hopes that within the next five years, this education revolution will reach children worldwide, from the rest of Africa to South America to Asia. Rita and Gideon both believe this technology has the potential to change their lives, ultimately helping them achieve their dreams that lie waiting to be discovered between the lines of a good book. You have to read more, to know more about what's going on on uh, this earth. And while Gideon continues to sell Kenke at the stand, he realizes he's carrying his education with him and the chance to be transported into a world outside his own, a world of imagination. He need only look down, he says, to realize that he just may be holding his future in his hands.